So let's look at some examples of that. In problem 71, we have two polynomials, this one right here and this one right here, that are getting added together. Um, so I can, because of the associative property, it's okay if I take those parentheses out so that I can regroup these terms in a different order. So I'm just going to write it as t cubed minus 4t squared minus 7t minus 5 plus 6t cubed plus t squared minus 3. Now you're going to look for like terms. So if you remember back to like terms in our linear um, expression section, like terms have to have matching variable parts. Um, their coefficients or their constants can be different, but the variable part of their term needs to be the same. So in this first polynomial, I have a t cubed here and another t cubed there. So t cubed plus 6 more t cubed is going to give me a total of 7t to the third, or t cubed. For the t squared terms, I have a negative 4t squared and a positive t squared. So when I combine those, I'm going to get a negative 3t squared. For the t terms, there's a negative 7t in this first polynomial. The second polynomial didn't have a t term. So I'm just going to carry that negative 7t down. And then at the end, my constants, negative 5 and negative 3, is going to give me a total of negative 8. So these two polynomials, when added together, end up equaling 7t cubed minus 3t squared minus 7t minus 8. And just as it was in our linear expressions, that is as simple as it gets. We can't break this down any further um, because we don't know what it's equal to. So the farthest we can get is to leave the cubed, the squared, the, the t to the 1, and the constant terms separated out like that. In number 74, we're doing subtraction. So the subtracting rules say that you need to distribute the subtraction to every term in the polynomial that's being subtracted. Because it's not just the 4c that that negative applies to. We're also subtracting a negative 9. So when we rewrite this polynomial with that subtraction distributed, we're going to have 6c plus 1 minus 4c plus 9. Now that the parentheses are gone and the subtraction is distributed, we're going to collect like terms, just like we did in number 71. So it looks like I've got 6c's here and a negative 4c's there. That'll give me a total of 2c's. And then a positive 1 and a positive 9 gives me a total of positive 10. Looking at these next examples, another one with addition. And this time I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut. So since this is addition, the signs aren't going to get changed inside the second polynomial. So I'm going to look for which terms are like that I can combine right off the bat. So I see that I have a 9a squared and another positive 6a squared, which is going to give me a total of 15a squared, a negative 11a, and a positive 9a gives me negative 2a, and then a positive 3 and a positive 5 gives me a positive 8. Number 73 is another addition problem with, um, since it's addition again, I can use the same shortcut that I used up here. Um, I made it into a smaller font so it would fit on our page. Hopefully I'll still be able to fit it here when I write it. So looking at like terms again, this one is an a squared b squared. And if you look at the second polynomial, 
its first term is also an a squared b squared. So we can add those together to get 11 a squared b squared. Then the second term in this polynomial is an a squared b, and over here we also have an a squared b. So plus 1 a squared b and minus 7 a squared b is going to leave me with minus 6 a squared b. The next term in my first polynomial is an a b, and this one also has an a b, so minus 4 a b's minus 2 more is going to give me a total of minus 6 a b's. And then my final term is the constant term, negative 13, positive 18 is going to give me a total of positive 5. There was one other thing that was mentioned in the rules that says that we want to write these in descending order of degrees. So what they mean by that is the individual degree of each term. Um, and these are already organized so that that's happening automatically. Um, this term had a degree 4, so did this one. They put them first because they've already written their polynomials in descending order of degrees. Um, so our answers are ending up already in that format. Um, if you did encounter a problem where these terms were scrambled up, not in order of degree, you would want to take that extra step to get them put in order. It looks like I did these a little out of order. I guess I'd meant to do all the adding first and then all the subtracting, but I think we'll be okay. So if I look at this shortcut method with this subtraction, I need to make this 3n cubed negative. These two negatives are con combined to make this a positive. The negative with this positive will make that 2n negative, and another negative with a negative will make that 4 positive. So combining my like terms, negative 5n cubed, negative 3n cubed is negative 8n cubed my squared terms, a negative n squared, a positive 8n squared is going to leave me with positive 7n squared. My n terms are a positive 7 and a negative 2, so combined make a positive 5, and my constant terms, a positive 7 with a positive 4, is going to give me a positive 11. One more example to look at here. We'll need to distribute that negative through first. So this is going to become a negative 3xy. That negative onto that positive makes that a negative 6x, and the negative onto the negative makes that a positive 4. Now it's an addition problem, now that that negative sign has been distributed through, so I can just combine my like terms. 2xy's minus 3xy's would leave me with a negative xy, and minus 3x minus 6 more x will leave me with a negative 9x. Plus 4y this polynomial doesn't have a 4y, it doesn't have a y term, so we'll just bring that 4y down. And then a negative 1 and a positive 4 for my constant terms will leave me with a total of positive 3. Okay. This